Hello, hello. Welcome to Stamping A to Z. I'm Linda Gibbs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada. Um, Stamping A to Z is a live weekly series that I do every Wednesday at noon mountain time. Yeah, it started with going through all the different Stampin' Up! products from A to Z um, and going through and showing you different how to use them, plus adding on techniques of using them in different ways to stretch your products even further and just have more fun with them and just uh, hopefully getting you to pull them out and use them. So I, in the last little, it kind of bounces around now that we have gone through the A to Z. Sometimes when there's new product, I'll show you new techniques and new ways to use things. If there's just a new bundle or something, sometimes I'll just show you that and how to use it. We, this past month, have been going through all the last chance items, which by the way, is ending May 1st. So if you haven't gotten your hands on your last chance items, go on my store, take a look at what's still available. There's some really great deals to be had as shown in my previous videos. Um, today, I'm going to pull out one of the new suites that's coming out in the new catalog, May 2nd. So you get a sneak peek at that. Um, it is, I fell in love with it. I love blues and whites. And at first I was kind of hesitant to even get, I love the paper, but the, you'll see the bundle is kind of like, huh, what do I do? And I didn't even realize when I got it that that's what it was. So it'll be interesting um, to see what you guys think. But I have since played with it and found, fell in love with it even more, both the stamp, the dies, everything, because they all coordinate, they all work together really well. There's some tricks that, um, there's some new things that you can do with it that hopefully this video will show you um, and you might be able to go back and look at old things. Maybe I did, didn't discover it before, but this is really cool. So I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to tell you yet. That's the second card I think that gets there. So I'm going to turn you around and we will get playing with this new, I think it's Countryside in Sweet. All right. Hello, Linda. Okay, I see it on my phone. I gotta make sure I can see comments. Now that it's in the holder here. All right. We will. Make sure that, oh, well, obviously I'm live if you found me. I just have to find myself here. Okay got it we've got comments all right here we go so the countryside inn comes with four items if you get the whole suite so there is a bundle our bundles are usually either a stamp set with a matching punch or a stamp set with matching dies this go around it's a stamp set with matching dies now, these are great everyday dies to use instead of the rectangular, stitched rectangular corn, not corners, stitched rectangles um, that have now retired. So if you don't have rectangles, these are your next best thing. They will be your friend. But you can see I have them taped here. There is a reason for that. So this uh, stamp, comes in one solid stamp. It's not a bunch of different stamps, which at first I was kind of like, huh? Oh, this is going to be annoying. But it's not, not as, uh, it's actually easier, I think, because you can, you can kind of product line it through, like you can, not product line it, you can, anyways, you can put it in a line up and stamp 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 and then cut 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 and you have a whole bunch of frames to use down the road and I will be showing you ways on how if you just want one single frame the best way to do that um so yeah this suite has a lot of kind of technique possibilities different ways you can use it lots and lots of fun so it has those two pieces it has an embossing folder 
the Countryside Blossoms Embossing Folder. It's not a 3D embossing folder, so it's one of the thinner ones. Um, so just take note when you're doing your embossing that the 3D embossing, the number four plate, that's not what you use. You use two number, mine aren't numbered because they're old, um, number three plates, the clear ones with your number one. You will see me, I will show you that in a card number two. And then lastly, so there's no really embellishments with this suite, but there's lots of embellishments that go. There's um, the adhesive backed solid gems has the blue that matches the new, um, what are they called? I can find them. These ones, these are the new in color dots. So these blues as well go really well and even with the yellows with the flowers. So there's lots of options for embellishments. There's also the beautiful Knight of Navy ribbon. It is currently in the mini catalog and it is continuing on into the annual catalog. So that goes really well with this suite if you're looking for, if you're an embellishment person and you're like, oh, how come there's no embellishments with this? Then the paper. The beautiful paper. This is such fun paper, not just for the colors, but it's just lots of fun. So there's, they're double sided as usual. So you've kind of got the busy side, the less busy side. There's cute little bunnies. And then there's some stripes. And there's some birds. I just, I love these blues and some stripes and then there's these trees with some flowers so even though this is busy it's not really busy compared to something like this and you've got this pretty pattern I love these colors together and then some more stripes and we already saw that one but you didn't see the cute foxes aren't they so cute they are adorable and then a nice oh I just I love all of this anyways love 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 okay on to the first card the first card is going to be just a simple card with some designer series paper so I kind of my magic of television you're not supposed to see that this is already cut <laughs> Right, this is a solid piece of paper, people. Okay, then, now I've already lost my stamp set and dies. Oh my goodness, okay, here we go. So obviously, I wanna cut these out. Now, I've got this on a magnet card. They do not come on a magnet card. I find it much easier to line them up on a magnet. I lay out some washi tape, and then I lay them on top. This is for when you are stamping out all those pre-stamped um, borders. So for me, the I find the easiest is to take one off at a time so that I can keep it somewhat lined up. You can reline it up, I'm just lazy. And then, so I would run this through and then I would have my one frame and then I'm gonna put it back so that it's even because I'm, I'm going to show you in a bit how to cut it all out at once so it does take a bit of finicky um lining up so you can see like you if you're if you're doing the frames with all the pieces you want to do a whole bunch at once and then if you're cutting out singles then you can do that a different time so run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine and voila We've got our two different size. Oh, my comments went my way. Hang on. Uh, oh, well, hopefully they'll come back. Okay, so then you've got these two pieces and you've got these two pieces. So obviously you could make two cards with this. Don't get rid of your inner pieces or your outer pieces because they are completely usable for both. 
Um, where did oh, <laughs> where the rest of my card stock go? Then, what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to put one on top of the other, so you've got a nice frame there. I've got this beautiful boho blue. This is one of the new in colors, the 2023 to 2025 in colors. I absolutely love this color. It reminds me of the, I think, I don't know what year, brocade blue, I think. I have to go find it. I don't know if it's close or the same. Um, and then I've got a piece of white here. So I'm just going to put all these pieces together. This is a really fast, simple card to do. And I find it easier than trying to get my adhesive kind of evenly around those corners. I'd rather use my glue. So that one's going underneath. And then this one's going to go on top. My glue is getting low in case you're wondering why I'm tapping it every time. And they should fit on top of each other. And this is where the glue comes in handy too. You have a bit of wiggle room so you can kind of get it lined up as well as you want. Then I want to cut out another rectangle. So this is the second smallest that I've pre-cut. But then I want to get a border. Which way does this go this way? Um, a frame, I guess, around my edge. So how do I do that? I've got, I probably shouldn't use the Stamparatus anymore since it's not available anymore. But it, you can put this on a clear block. I would strongly suggest using grid paper though. So if you don't have the Stamparatus grid paper, um, you'll want to use the grid paper, any kind of grid paper, just so you can line it up. Uh, my layers aren't um, based on a measurement. They're just the dies. So whatever... Um, the spacing from the smaller to the larger. Um, I can measure it, but I'm not. I'm not um, deciding what the if this is what you mean. So it's just slightly more than a quarter. So it's kind of like a five eighths, maybe. But that's just, I mean, this is going to be slightly less because it's not quite even, right? That's a quarter. So it's just whatever the distance is between the um, dies. I did not decide that measurement. Is that what you mean or do you mean the outside measurements? Hopefully I answered that and then my comments went away again. What the heck? Oh, there we go. So if you mean these, this outer layer, so the white is a quarter of an inch smaller, and then these ones are one eighth of an inch, if that's what you meant. Okay, so for my border, I've got my pre-cut piece, and you can see I've stamped um, where this is stamping, and I did that on purpose because I want to know where I'm putting this to know where I'm stamping. But now, if I stamp this, I'm going to get two rows of stamps and I wanna be able to stamp something in the middle. So I don't want that. So then you need a mask of some sort. You can use a piece of, this is just um, the post-it note tape. If it's the right size, you can use that. I went as far as cutting out a piece of our masking tape using the dies. And then it's even that much easier because, well, and it's, I already used it once, so it's got a print on it even 
as well. So I just want to try, this is slightly off, but I think it should still be okay. Um, you just want to have the border open so that you can have your frame stamp when you stamp it. And then I'm just going to put on, I don't have to worry about the outer stuff. I'm just making sure my one that I want stamped is inked up. And then I'm just going to come down and push where I want it. And voila, I've got my inked border around my piece. So that's the only part that gets difficult if you're wanting to just put a border since it's not in single. Your other way of doing this is to clean Oops, sorry. clean your stamp really well. You could use um, a marker, one of your markers, and you can color just the frame that you want to stamp. That works as well, but you have to make sure that your stamp is very clean everywhere else. Otherwise you risk having marks on your paper. So a mask is the easiest way with this kind of stamp, but you can do it however works for you. Then I took this May the Good You Do Come Back to You because I thought it would fit really nicely. And unfortunately, it's not a clear stamp. So I just have to hope, actually. So this is where stamping on grid paper comes in because you can kind of see how lined up it is. It's pretty darn lined up and centered to my sticker. So we're just going to go with that and hope that it comes out. So that's pretty darn good. We will take it. All right, my border is slightly, my frame is slightly crooked, but you know, it's handmade. It's uh, not going to be 100%. So it is what it is. So then I've got, so, oh, the, the sentiment came from the Something Fancy stamp set which is in, um, it's one of the stamp set that goes with the, what's it called? Uh, Two-Tone Flora. It's a two-set bundle um, in the current mini catalog. It is going to continue into the annual catalog, but normally when they continue on, they unbundle them. And when they're bundled, you save 10%. So just a heads up. If you want to save that 10% and you want the bundle, um, that is better to do it now than to wait. And I don't think the stamp sets are going up in price. The cardstock, adhesives, those kind of things are going up. But I don't think that any of the stamp sets or dies are. From what the few that I've looked at, they were very similar, if not the same price. It's just the bundling that saves you money. Okay, so then I'm popping this up like so in the center. And we've got our little border. Um, very simple. You can add a bit of bling here. Let's take. So that's card number one, very simple. Now, I told you that you could make another card with this. I'm not gonna show you how to make it, and I actually cased it from another demonstrator. I changed it slightly, but I'll just show it to you. Um, so this is not my own original. I used the class, these are the embossing folder from the online exclusives. So now 
it looks like different paper. So this is the same paper. You can cut it down even more or you can leave it this size and turn this paper over. Now, if you don't like that there's a slight edge when you cut, like it cuts down, you could take your bone folder and you can smooth out that edge if it really bugs you. If it doesn't bug you, you can just flip it over. So you could flip it over like this. I cut out, so I find that another bundle that works really well with this uh, suite is the Petal Park um, stamp set and punch. It's the flowers just match it really well. So that's where these flowers are from. They were just stamped color on color. And then again, added a bit of bling. Here's that ribbon that I showed you. The birthday wishes comes from this lasting joy. This is a new stamp set. It doesn't say that it goes with the countryside corners, but if you look at a lot of the samples, once you get the annual catalog, they do use a lot of these um, sentiments and the flowers. You can tell they kind of go with. So one of these, either of these or both of these, if you want the sentiments, the Petal Park has a whole other sentiment pack that goes with it. This one works really well with the corner frames. So that's where the birthday wishes is from if you're looking for it. All right, moving on to the next one. Now, this is where I promised you you're going to learn something, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe you've already figured it out if you have it. Um, hopefully, it's new for you because I thought this was absolutely brilliant when I saw it. So, we've got... This is one of the papers out of the designer series paper. And then if we take our embossing folder, you will notice, oops, wrong way, this way, that it, if you line it up just so, it matches exactly this paper. So not only do you have this super pretty paper, you can emboss it and have even more bling. But before we emboss it, I want to cut it out, which I forgot. <laughs> I forgot I was cutting it out and I only brought over my embossing plates. Hang on. So let's take, let me just get the cutting cutting plate because I only grabbed my embossing plates. Okay. Let's do that. We've got our plates. All right. First we need to, um, I don't remember which size I did now. I think it's this one. So we just want a single, a single one. We'll just use that and we're going to cut out um, our frame first because if you emboss it first and then cut it out, when you roll it through with this to cut it, it flattens it not all the way, but it does flatten it a little bit. So you have two, two options. You can emboss it, cut it, and then try and re-emboss it the same. But I think it's better to cut it first. That's my, that's my two cents. You can go with whatever your preference is. Okay, so I've got my cutting plates here. <laughs> this is a mighty I, I think I'm going to need a new cutting plate soon. I like to run um, my dies this way rather than this way because the more you run them this way, the more they curl. So either have them at an angle or this way because the longer part always curls the more times you run it through. So that's just a little tip there. 
And then I'm kind of looking at these two squiggles to try and make see if they're about even. And then the flowers on either side and the vines. Just so that it's all kind of, although I kind of I want this in the center. So I might move it down a bit. Okay. Then we take our other plate, put it down run it through so it is you are kind of losing some of your paper by doing this but you can do like we did in our other card and use this outside part on another card there's always ways to use up pieces never fear okay so now we've got our piece here that back over there okay now we want to line it up into here so it's just a matter of kind of fiddling with it a little bit until you're happy with where it is so you can see even the flowers everything matches up it's crazy I'm assuming they planned it that way but they don't tell us these things. So unless someone plays and finds it, you don't know. So this is why I hope that these videos helps you to figure out more fun that you can have with your things. Okay, so then we've got, this isn't the 3D, so that's why I've got my one clear plate. And I'm trying, uh oh, I think it moved. It did. No, it didn't. Must just be the angle that it's at. You could put tape to hold it down together. Um, I'm just kind of being a little bit lazy. Now, if you really want a good impression, you could have wet the paper a little bit. Um, it picks up the impression that much more. But we are just... Keep it simple here. All right, you ready? Here's the wow. I love this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's so pretty. Like you've got these different colors and you've got everything is embossed. So you no longer have a flat piece of fancy DSP. Now you've got a textured fancy piece of DSP. Okay, now, now what? Now we build up our card. So I've got another piece of boho blue. I think all of my cards today have boho blue as the card base. It's obviously a new uh, favorite of mine. I hope I can't remember if I ordered another pack of this or not because I think I'm gonna need one. All right, and then I'm going to add a piece of, so this is Misty Moonlight. This is one of the new core colors that have come in for the starting May 2nd. It is a former in color. So if you are one, per, if you are a person who collects in colors um, and keeps them, you might have it in your stash so don't go buy a new one before you check your stash so then i've got some frames cut out this is where maybe i should show you the frames first okay so then this is where we come in and we want to clean this off because we want to use our versamark we don't need all these colors on our versamark My chamois super wet right now because I had to clean it. It was dry. And then there's always that magic kind of not too wet, not too dry, where it's just perfect, but it's just a little bit more work. How much smaller? You mean how much lighter is the Misty Moonlight? Or, oh, size, size. I believe it's the 
border. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did it as a quarter of an inch. Total, not all around. So instead of the card base is always five and a half by four and a quarter. So I would have cut it at five by five and a quarter by four is most likely what it is. Um, okay, then I'm gonna take my Versamark and I'm gonna take my white embossing powder here. And we need a piece of paper. Okay. And again, I know where it's gonna stamp based on these, so I can line it up without much troubles. And then you wanna make sure you take your embossing buddy so the powder doesn't stick everywhere. And then I'm gonna ink this up with Versamark. Oh, sorry, I'm... <laughs> Making you seasick here for a sec. Close your eyes while I... So it's okay if it's crooked because I'm cutting it all out. I'm just, this is just kind of a blank piece of paper. And then you can see the Versamark lines there. You could use, you could use it like this really or um, as a frame. But I'm gonna step it up a little bit more and add some. <laughs> I really need to get this back in the jar. <laughs> oh, it makes my life easier, but you know. That's one side. Kind of tell where you've missed a little bit so you can go back and then if I can find my brush here just brush off the excess okay there we go then we heat her up This does take a little bit longer being a bigger stamp and then all the little details. However, if you're doing a bunch and your heat tool is nice and hot, it does go faster if you're doing like one after the other. And that's what I suggest doing is like, so if you're working with a bunch of the blues and the whites because you're using the designer series paper, um, pull out all your blues, do a bunch of these and cut them all out because then all your dyes will be set to cut them out. And that's, I mean, that's the nice thing with having the one solid stamp is that it makes it easier to die cut these all at once as frames. So... They work really fast and quick as frames, a little slower to do it as a border, but that's just getting fancy. So the fancier you get, the longer it takes, right? That's just kind of the way it goes. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to show you cutting this. I won't actually cut it because I've already got a bunch cut, but I just wanted to show you how lining it up. So make sure it's all stuck to your washi tape. And then I've kind of folded my washi tape over so I have something to pick it up with. And then you just want to line it up. 
Now you're going to think some of it looks like it's like, see how here, some of them are um, very tight to the edge, especially the three line one. So that's the one that you kind of want to make sure it looks off, but when you cut it, it cuts it well. So just trust yourself because there's nothing in the middle, you can push it down and then that'll keep it. And then you can run it through and have your frames. So here's all my pre-cut um, frames that I did while I was playing. So then I've already got mine here that I've pre-cut. I was kind of, my, my paper was a little short on this one, so it's not quite even, but it'll do. So then I'm just gonna put this one on top of here, like so. And I'm just gonna use glue to glue it down. You can tell it's, it's, it's thinner than the adhesive. So you would have an edge of adhesive hanging off if you used the stamp and seal. Okay, and then again with the glue, you have time to adjust it. Oops, if you're off a little. Isn't that pretty? Oh, so pretty. Okay, so then that doesn't quite look right. So then I brought in the blue to make it look a little bit more popped up, but I want to pop this up. So we'll take our dimensionals again. And I'm going to do this middle part first, because then it'll be easier to line it up. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background. Willow is in my craft room and she is snoring away. So you just, um, most of the flowers are going up this way. So I'm going to turn it this way, even though this one, actually, I think that might be a ladybug. I'm not sure. Okay, so I've got that there. And then all I have to do to put this on is just put it around it. So for this one, I'm gonna use glue. So again, I can kind of fiddle with it as I get it where I want it. And this one, I'm going flat. You could pop this one up as well if you wanted. I kind of like it being down. Lower, and then this is popped up. There we go. Okay. There. And we've got our background. So then for the rest of it, I took the For You, which is from, if I can find it. It is from the Love For You bundle. This is in the mini catalog. It is carrying over into the annual catalog. I really like this set because anything that has words, um, cut out words, and it has triple. So you can cut it, you can cut out a small, a medium, and then the bubble around it, which is always really fun. This one, I don't know if I was feeling lazy or I just wanted to try it out. I decided just to do one layer plus the stamp that matches. So this is another way to do it with a few less steps. So you can stamp the For You. That's with Knight of Navy. Oh, I feel like I'm missing And then I just ran it through the cut and emboss machine. And then, oh, through the magic of television, Here's the for you. Okay, oh my gosh, <laughs> it just doesn't want to come. Okay, then um, I want to also do some flowers. So these Petal Park flowers. 
So I've got, there's, it's kind of a two-step one. So you've got the outline and then you've got the inside. So I find it easiest to do the outline first. And you always want to kind of check and see how your, um, you're going to be cutting it out. So it's kind of this way. So we will do those. Go with that. And you know what, I'm going to stamp two while I'm at it because I know I'm going to need another set for my next card. So we'll just kind of go like so. Alright, and then I've got the boho blue as my inside. You could stamp it off if you wanted it even lighter. I do find though it does lighten with time. So here it looks pretty dark when I show you my made card that I made. I don't know if it was yesterday or when it was on the weekend maybe. Um, it has lightened quite a bit. So it will know that it will lighten. You can see it looks quite a bit darker, but this is one of those that lightens with time. So, patience, which I don't have a lot of. Okay, then we punch out our flowers and voila. Okay, then it's just a matter of, again, grabbing some dimensionals here. I can get them. The smaller ones work well on these words, but I think a big one fits here, mostly. And then again, you can probably fit a big one here and here. And we'll just put a big one here. And then we will add our flowers. So you just kind of want to curl them up a little, give them a little bit of dimension, and then you'll put dimensional on the back. They will get flattened if you're putting them in the mail, but they'll start out, they'll still have a little bit of dimension. I'm putting it on the flatter side, so kind of lining it up next to my frame and then and putting it on there and then same goes with this but I'm going to use a smaller one here okay and this one I'm going to put on the inside there we go and then that tells me where I can put my words. So that's where you kind of might want to get your flowers first, or you might want to do your words first if you have a specific spot you want it. Ugh, I didn't end up sneezing, but now my nose is running. Ha! <laughs> ah, okay. There we go. For you. And then you can add some bling. Oh, sorry, I gotta blow my nose. I'll use the, the shinier bling just so you can see the difference. Um, on this one, if I can find my pieces here. And it's actually perfect when it has the three sizes because it's like you've got the one bigger one, you've got the middle one, and then you've got the middle one. And then you have your pretty card. I just, I love the texture of this. There's probably something even better you can do with it, make it stand out. Um, I used the words on this one because I didn't want a sentiment covering up the um, 
the beautiful texture of the designer series paper. So that is number two. Then the third one is more technique fun. So um, this is something really fun. I don't think I've done it before. I might have done something similar, but not quite the same. So here we've got pieces of cardstock. And we will need our embossing folder. So we've got, like I said, got my boho blue cardstock base. I'm really liking this blue. And then this is for embossing. This is for my background. I, <laughs> before you ask me the size, I'm gonna guess it's a half inch. So it would have been five by three and three quarters. And then this one, uh, it's bigger than what I want, obviously. But I'm gonna do it this way because I want to do it, um, I'm not putting it in this way, I'm putting it in this way because my card is going this way and just the way the flowers are. I did do some cards, like I'll show you. So here's a white one with the embossed and I have it going the opposite way because the center's covered. You can't really tell unless you really look at it closely. But I wanted, um, this one stands out quite a bit more with what we're gonna do with it. So I wanted to make sure that it was good. All right, so with this one, you want to make sure that your paper is well anti-static. You're going to take your Versamark and instead of putting it directly on where if if you're really light-handed you can make it work but the easier way is if you have a solid brayer you can ink up your brayer with the Versamark and then you can ink your embossing folder so if I was using a color which I have done before, um, you'd be able to see it <laughs> since the first mark is clear. You just wanna make sure you've got lots of first mark on there. Okay. Then we're going to put this here like so. And then we will close it if it's we're happy. Okay, and then we need our boss here. Okay, now this is something that I want to run through more than once. So there's two ways. You could run it through this way more than once, or you can turn it, so oh, it's a little tight. I'm gonna run it twice this way because I really want to make sure that the Versamark gets onto my cardstock. So I'm going to go through one time. I'm going to hold it all like a good sandwich. And I don't run it through the other way because I don't want to break the spine of the embossing folder. Sometimes if it gets crunched, it can break the spine. So you don't want to go back and forth. That's the only thing. If you don't care if your spine breaks over time, then you can go back and forth, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because it'll get hard to line it up. You know, it's, it's not just about breaking it. Okay, so then, um, I'm gonna make sure I have my powder handy here. I've got my white powder again. I'm just gonna kind of shake it so that it's easier to pick up. Then, so this is something, I don't know if you can see that in the video, 
it's darker and lighter. So you could even use it like this. It's really pretty. You've got that kind of the watermark, the darker to the lighter. But here we're going to just fill it with white embossing powder. And you want to make sure that you really get a good covering of powder. Especially on the edges. Okay. Once you're happy with that, set aside your powder. And then comes the drying or embossing. This takes even longer than the, uh, I should have had my heat tool going and heating while I was putting that on. Cause this is gonna take, I should have, pre-done one so you don't have to sit through but this way you'll get an idea of how long it takes so I don't know if you can see it's changing colors here so this is a great I mean I'll show you in a sec you could do the opposite and use ink use white paper emboss it and then use ink to get that colored popped up part but it's two totally different looks. So this is just a whole new way to use your embossing folders. You can do this with any embossing folder. In fact, it works even better with the 3D embossing folders. So even though you might not have this one, go ahead and try it with a different one. Have some fun. There's so many things you can do with embossing folders. It's unbelievable. If you haven't watched my videos before, there's, I don't know, there's probably four or five now that are just different ways to use your embossing folders. So you can always go back in the history and check it out. They are also most, a lot of my videos are on my YouTube channel. I still have to post my earlier ones. Um, I keep, it's on my list. <laughs> on my long list of things to do. All right, so I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it is like nice and shiny white, and then you've got the blue. It is so, so pretty. The MRSA mark I put on, so you want to put it on the raised, well, it depends what you're trying to emboss. Um, I So I wanted the background embossed, so I put it on the part where it's flat and the, the design is pressed in. If you wanted to do it um, so that this part was the part that, like your design was the part that turned white, then you would do it on this opposite side, but then it would be debossed, not, it would be debossed. I don't know. Is that a word? Um, so yeah, I did it on the side with the Stampin' Up. You just have to feel um, and decide where you want it to go. So this is what it looks like with the embossing powder. I said I was going to show you. So this is a sample. You can see it kind of, I got it. I ran it through white cardstock and then I took my brayer and I did the boho blue over top so you have to be careful because if it falls or like you're slightly off you'll get that um, color on there the stamp is up it doesn't matter when you emboss you can have it either way it's just where you put your versa mark that matters um, so this, this is the inked one this is the embossed one 
Um, this is an embossed one with gold embossing powder on a white cardstock. This is what I um, told you. If you leave just the Versamark without putting any embossing powder, you get the two-tone look. This is using Misty Moonlight. Um, I think that's all I had. Yeah. So those are just other ones that you can do. This was kind of the one I was... The new, the new fanciness I was featuring. So then I need to cut this down. And if you remember... I believe I said this one, let me just double check, is three and three quarters by five. Oh, this one's not quite five. Did I mess that up? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking. This one is, okay, so... I want to cut this one just under four and three quarters. And then, oh, this one's three and a half, not three and three quarters. I lied. Oh my. Okay, so this one, I want to go just over four and a half. So we're going to cut off. I think basically I'm cutting off to the white. See where that gets us. I think that gets us to four and a half. Okay, and then we want to cut this way. Uh, what did I say? It was at three and a half. Right now we're at four. So we'll cut a quarter of an inch off each side. And then we'll see. I think we need to cut a bit more off this bottom part. There. And voila. Okay. It's all just, it's not, not everything is scientific. <laughs> right? Not all of it's very measured. So I think a lot of this um, size was based on the width of the embossing folder to be able to make it work um, for this. So, you know, it's not always what we were trying to do. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I just put that in. A stamped stamp. Okay. And then it's easier to use glue on these embossed just because you've got the raised and the lowered parts and with it being embossed it's a bit um, stiffer than if you're just using cardstock so I don't know if you can see it's got that nice sheen to it it'd be cool if they had shimmery embossing powder I feel like well they used to have the iridescent one but they don't anymore it's kind of sad and you can see I've got white powder everywhere. And it was so funny. I was watching a video the other day and I saw someone using a little handheld desk vacuum. And it was it was a cow and she just went to clean up her space. I so need that right now. All right, maybe I'll have to put it on my Mother's Day wish list for the boys. Okay, so then I'm going to grab another um frame I'm gonna grab this one and I so this is still a work in progress maybe you guys can help me out um this is kind of what I came up with but I'm not totally convinced this is what I want to do so I'll pull out my other card that I made I've got a couple options I did not put my sentiment down because I'm not convinced I'm happy with what I have I might wait, actually, this, so um, when the new catalog comes out, it wasn't part of our pre-order, but there is a set with more dies with more words, and so it might work for this, so I might wait, but here's the, 
here's what I've made so far. I even have the embellishments on it. And then I've got, so I stamped birthday wishes um, onto boho blue, but I found that just kind of gets lost in there. And then I tried birthday wishes with white embossing powder, and this is the slightly darker misty moonlight. Um, this one's okay, but I'm not totally sold on it. Do you guys have any ideas? Or should I wait for um, words, like something like for you, or like even, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I'm not sure because I don't it's so beautiful I don't know where or what to put as a sentiment I just I really like the background so I don't know what to do I might have to keep thinking any ideas you guys have preferences other ideas I'm open I'm open to suggestions I really am not sure but this is my wow card the wow was the background I haven't uh, completed the wow Anyways, hopefully um, it's not, this one, the card isn't the point, the, um, it's the background that's the point. So hopefully you can go have fun um, playing with your embossing folders and trying this out. Try it with silver, try it with gold, try it with um, the 3D versus the non-3D. Just play, have fun and play. Like some of the best times is just making backgrounds and then you can worry about card making after that. That's some of the most fun I have because then you can really get creative and have fun. Um, I wanted to just show you one other, actually two other cards. See, I just, I went crazy with this set. So here's another one using the designer series paper. And again, just flipping the paper over. Same, these are all part of the, and here's that denim or knight of navy. I don't know. I always want to call it denim. denim for some reason. And then here's a whole other <laughs> color combo. Um, this is that new Moody Mauve and this is the uh, something wheat, wild wheat. Um, I tried it with the pecan pie. It looks good with the pecan pie too, but I was kind of going with the in colors with this. So it's a very interesting color combo. I like the pinks. That wild wheat is something to be, I'm going to have to find some color combos, but this one's not bad. I don't mind this one. It's just a whole other thing from our um, blue and white theme that we have going on. So let me just show you again the cards that we made today. Well, we'll just, uh, I don't know, we'll keep both of those there. <laughs> And then we've got the for you. And then we've got this one as well. Aren't the little flowers cute? And they're so quick and easy to make. They're just, they're the best. I'm glad I didn't get this um, with the mini catalog until this set came out the countryside and then I bought this because I knew I was going to want um I was going to want the flowers and yes you I pretty you bought this I think you bought both the pieces for this this was a two two um two stamp bundle piece and I'm pretty sure you got them both I'm not totally sure so yeah you can have lots of fun but Totally. If you guys play with embossing folders and you come up with some cool backgrounds, um, post them. Post them in the comments or just on my site and tag me or if you post it on your own site and, and show me what you've made. I'd love to see. Well, hopefully this was a educational and fun <laughs> video for you today. Um, I will be back next Wednesday. Yes, I will. I leave Thursday. For provincials so Wednesday should be good um I'll probably bring out another new uh product to play with from the new catalog because the new catalog will be live next Wednesday I believe yes it should be so 
we can have lots of fun and I can actually show you the cat the inside of the catalog I'm still not allowed to show you the inside so and if you want a catalog let me know um if I need to send it to you I just require you to pay shipping if you want to do porch pickup you can pick it up otherwise I have catalogs for you if you want one all right have a great rest of your week and we'll hopefully see you next week bye